the Sevo Seastar S30 in EQ mode. Don't worry, I will not explain you again and again and again step by step how you have to set it up because there are already now I guess around a million videos who show you that exactly but I want to discuss five topics which might be of value to you and that right after the trailer. Hey this is View Into Space I'm Sascha from Switzerland, so good to meet you there, and thanks for watching my channel. So, a sea star has from now on to look like that when you shoot the stars, at least if you follow the trend. Doesn't mean it doesn't work the other way around anymore. But number one, let's start with the why. Besides that it's a nice trend, it looks so much cooler, but what is it really for the EQ mode? There are two main advantages. The first one is, and the biggest one, you do not have field rotation. Meaning, and you experienced that already, if you shot it in traditional mode, if you shoot it quite long, while your object is always centered, everything else starts to shift and the area that you have to crop will always be smaller and smaller and smaller. So you lose property. If you go with eco mode, the whole picture stays exactly the same framed and each and every exposure exposes the full object as you intended it at the very start. And that's a huge advantage. And the second thing is that you can expose longer. And no, even marketing wants you to believe that 10 seconds are not enough in most cases. At least to get something faint also, you need longer. And with that we already come to the point number two. How long can you expose in EQ mode? I heard some people saying that with the S50 you cannot use the 30 second because too many frames will be dropped. I can tell you that with the S30 this is not the case. You can wonderfully shoot with 30 seconds exposures. None of them is dropped. Works perfectly. Obviously this is thanks to the wider focal length. So when you have a S30, put it all up to 30 seconds and this will really help that it gathers so much more light for each, each exposure, also the fainter parts. And for number three, we come to equipment. Because you need more equipment than you had before to do the EQ mode. And my recommendation is a little bit, uh, at least for some people of you, unpopular one. Ever heard of Timo? <laughs> and just as a side note, first of all, this video is not sponsored at all by Timo. But privately, I buy quite a lot from Timo. I would say until now, perhaps 200 or 300 things at least. And of all of these, I had about four or five, which were literally trash. I had to throw it away. Mostly it was an issue of smell. But in all other cases, it is amazingly good, especially for what it costs. Now the things that I show you here might not be available at Timu at wherever you live. But what I can tell you is that this wedge, which looks 100% like the Skywatcher wedge I got from Timu. It has no branding on it, but looking at the quality, I would bet it comes straight out of the Skywatcher factory over there and was just snatched or whatever, or they just copied it. But it's from a quality point of view, I would say there's no difference. Was it cheaper? Um, original price, interestingly, no. It costs about the same as the branded one, but if you know how to game Timu, you can buy something which originally costs around $80 for $30. And then it makes a huge difference. So just that you know. Second of all, you might have realized that the screws the C-Star has are not the same as the tripod screws. They're much smaller. So you need an adapter. The wedge actually has the right 
um, screw for the C-star, but to get then from the tripod to the wedge, you need again the larger screw. Where do you get that from? Obviously, Timo in bags, they look like this. You just screw it over the tripod screw and then you have the right screw to actually connect the wedge. I've seen people 3D print some adapters. And while I love 3D printing, I would absolutely caution you to do that. Because this still has some weight and this is even just the S30. The S50 is even heavier, tilted like that. And putting all that weight on a small plastic screw it's a recipe for disaster and I'm sure after a few time using it at one point it will come crashing down. So, so I think this, this whole bag full of these adapters cost me around three dollars. It's more than worth buying something in metal. And then the last thing that you need is a good tripod. Now this tripod here is really solid metal. It's heavy, it's sturdy. I bought it by Timo. Actually, I bought around five or six tripods already by Timo because I use them for camera, lighting, all the YouTube stuff. And there wasn't one which was really bad until now. And this is the best one and that's why I use it now for the C-Star. But you can even buy a telescope tripod at Timo and it costs you, I think, a hundred bucks. And it looks, at least for, for this purpose, it would be perfect. So again, just something to consider. While for my real astrophotography rigs, I would keep my hand way off Timo. But, but for something like that, it works flawlessly and it's probably twice or three times as cheap as if you would buy it somewhere else. Just as an idea. Now something connected to that is how do you make sure that your C-star with the tripod is not tipping over? Because you know, if the arm even is out, it just hangs out quite a lot. The one thing that is important is that you actually align this axis with one of the legs. And if that's the case, then the whole weight actually is on this leg and it will definitely not tip over. If you put it somewhere in between the legs, you have a bigger chance that it will tip over. Even I would say with such a tripod, there's not a big danger, but just anyway, make it as a rule that you do this alignment. And now my fifth tip, last but not least, you might have seen my video about SETI Astro Super Resolution Upscaling Tool. If not, I will put a link in the description below. The one brilliant use case I did not mention in this video is for pictures shot with the C-Star. But especially with the C-Star S30, because the biggest problem, especially if you shoot smaller objects with this one, is resolution. The resolution gets so ridiculously low that you have no chance of really processing in a way that it looks nice afterwards. Upscale it. You can use the SETI Astro tool or otherwise any AI generated upscaling tool that you have, Luminar Neo, um, Topaz or whatever, and you will have much the better chance afterwards of getting something decent out of whatever you recorded with your C-Star. I wish you much success using and exploiting the new EQ mode of the C-Star. This was short and sweet. See you next time. Clear skies.